Is it possible for a modern man, a scientist, to keep religious faith and to do good in the century of developing scientific knowledge, technology, and the lack of love, care, and mercy in people? The answer to this question is the biography of Saint Luca, Wojna Jesenetsky, the Archbishop of the Crimea, whose life became a hagiography. He faced the Maker in the second part of the 20th century, on the day when our Church celebrates the All Saints Day. Being an outstanding scientist, a surgeon, a founder of the scientific school, the author of many textbooks, which were used by many generations of doctors, he was an extraordinary person. Valentin was born in 1877 into a family of faithful parents, but according to his memories, he did not receive a religious upbringing from his family. He apprehended the teaching of Christ by a serious reading of the New Testament. Artistically gifted by nature, Valentin wanted to enter the Academy of Arts in St. Petersburg. However, during his entrance examination, he began to doubt. He remembered the words of Christ had said to his disciples, The harvest truly is great, but the laborers are few, and decided that he had no right to do what he liked, but he had to do his best to alleviate people's sufferings. So his way of service began. He decided to devote himself to medicine. He became a doctor, worked in many hospitals, successfully defended his thesis, held scientific research on purulent medicine, gave lectures on anatomy and surgery at university. He often took part in discussions concerning spiritual issues, where he disproved the ideas of scientific atheism. In the Red Cross Hospital of Kiev, Valentin met his future wife, religious sister of Mercy Anna Vasilyevna Lanskaya, who was named the Holy Sister for her kindness, meekness, and deep faith in God. In 1904, they married. The couple had four children. Thanks to his deep faith and gift for preaching, he was ordained a priest. One day, Bishop Innocent Pustinsky told him, Doctor, you must be a priest. And Valentin Felixovich answered without any hesitation, Vladiko, I will, if it is the will of God. Since then, he simultaneously worked as a doctor, as a professor, and served as a priest serving the liturgy in the cathedral on Sundays, and teaching at the university wearing a cassock. During the hard period of persecutions of the Orthodox Church, Luca was arrested and accused of counter-revolutionary actions, and was exiled to Siberia. On his way to Siberia, the holy doctor had to endure severe conditions, but in spite of this he performed many surgeries, saving from death those people he met in exile. Being arrested, Luca was often incarcerated, was interrogated non-stop. For 13 days, different interrogators, changing one another, questioned Luca, trying to make him give false evidence against himself. He was offered to continue his scientific research, but in exchange, they demanded to leave his position of the priest. Luca gave them a firm rejection, and in 1940 was exiled to Siberia for the third time. When in 1941 the Great Patriotic War began, Luca sent a telegram to the chairman of the Supreme Soviet of the Soviet Union, Mikhail Kalinin. I am Bishop Luca Wojnicinetsky, professor, and being a specialist in the purulent medicine, I am able to help the soldiers both in the rear and on the front line, anywhere I would be given an opportunity. I ask you to interrupt my exile and send me to the hospital. When the war ends, I am ready to continue my exile. Bishop Luca. And the Archbishop was appointed as the main surgeon of the Krasnoyarsk Hospital, being also responsible for the military hospitals of that area. Despite the opposition of the atheistic authorities, Saint Luca always began his surgeries with prayers and depicting the holy sign of the cross with iodine on the body of the patient. On Sundays he served in the church. For his contribution as a priest, Luca was ordained an archbishop. 
In 1944, he moved to Tambov, where he began to restore the spiritual life of the region, opening 24 parishes. Moreover, in several months of 1944, for the needs of the front and the construction of tank column of Dmitry Donskoy, as well as the squadron of Alexander Nevsky, Archbishop Luka helped to collect 250,000 rubles. In total, less than in two years, about 1 million rubles was collected for such needs. And for his deep patriotism, Saint Luca was honored by the medal for decent service in the Great Patriotic War and became the laureate of Stalin's award for his new scientific ideas in purulent diseases. His two last decades of life, Luca served in the Crimea. He preached that the heart of the priest must be a fire reflecting the light of the gospel and love to the cross. Being seriously ill and completely blind, he courageously resisted to the closing of churches and defended people from persecutions of godless authorities. Luca's deep perdition, combined with his fervent faith and uncrushable courage of the first Christian martyrs, united with his scientific wisdom. Besides special medical works, the Holy Doctor wrote such books as Science and Religion, Spirit, Soul and Body, in which he addressed both his contemporaries and descendants, and everyone who contemplates. In our life we meet two types of people. Some of them deny religion for the sake of science, others don't trust science for the sake of religion. There are also those people who can find harmony between these two needs of the human spirit. Isn't such a harmony a natural state that everyone should try to aspire? Both needs are rooted deep in human soul. The main crisis on an educated person is that his mind and heart are not at peace. The letter to his son contains comprehensive clarification. Serving God is my only happiness and the sense of my whole life because my faith is deep. Love the Lord your God with all your heart and with all your soul and with all your mind, and love the neighbor as thyself. This way Jesus Christ taught his apostles. The Holy Doctor followed these gospel commandments and fulfilled them by the feet of his life. Many people were grateful to Archbishop Luca, but Luca considered his serving God to be far more important than his medical work. And it, it is not a coincidence that in a church chant he is honored by wonderful words which reflect his feet, Divine Dr. Saint Luca. In hard times of persecutions, Luca was deprived the possibility to work at hospital, but he continued to cure sick people at home. There was a notice on his door which said that the professor of medicine gave free treatment. Even hopeless patients recovered after visiting Archbishop Luca. Such successful treatment was the result of both his professional medical knowledge and his deep faith in God. In his last years, losing sight which was partially spoiled in prisons and labor camps, the sick doctor continued to serve people with full sacrifice. He helped the needy and prayed for desperately ill people. Saint Luca died in 1961 at the age of 84. In 2000 he was canonized by the Russian Orthodox Church.